You already know we in the building with Snow Billy and the whole money bag talk. We're going to have a good discussion today, man. You know, um, got a beautiful female in the building today, too. You know, we'll be asking some questions, you know, in relation to the picture and things I did in my game in the streets. So what's up? How you feeling? I feel real good today. I feel amazing. How you feeling today? Everything is cool. Just cool? Yeah, everything's cool, though. Ain't no tripping. So I see this money. What is it called? Help me out. The money bag talk with Stole Billionaire. So tell me a little bit about what's the money bag talk and, you know, what we talking about. <laughs> well, um... The Money Bad Talk was a podcast I created like three years ago. But at the time I created that my audience wasn't mature for it. You know what I'm saying? So I had to go off into another direction to cater to my audience. So I took the whole Money Bad Talk with Snow Billionaire and put it up in the archives so the time was right to put it out. Which is now, you know, especially with my success financially on the movie deal, the five movie deal slate. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. That's big. That's real big of you. You definitely talking that big money talk for sure, for sure. So you are definitely somebody that can, you know, direct people on how to talk that bag. So, you know, in this picture right here, you showing a lot of money, what you had going on right here. Um, well, that picture probably is about, I would say about um, four years, five years ago. Um, at that current time, um, I was getting a lot of money at that time. I was getting a lot of money. I probably was averaging on a profit about 10000 every Friday. You know what I mean? From one venture on a profit at the time of that photo. Um, that photo at that time, oh, yeah, it's like um, I was riding around my hood. Basically, um, had a lot of business in my hood, so I would ride around with a lot of money. Um, daily, I probably... He collect anywhere from 40 to 80 bands on a daily basis. But that wasn't my profit. My profit was taken out every Friday, which was 10 bands. You know what I'm saying? After everything was paid out and workers got paid and lieutenants and everything. So, you know, that's just a day worth of work. I'm just showing. You know, when niggas talk that money talk, that's 100000 right there. That's a day. It's a hundred thousand cash. So what would you what say? What a hundred thousand dollar car to Right, that part. <laughs> what would you say to the average working person that, you know, they don't even make a hundred thousand dollars a year? <laughs> so what would you say to them, you know, on you know, uh how you was receiving that money versus the money that you receiving now and you know not being you know, that type of person that, you know, want to be that worker person or, you know, only live off $30,000 a year because really that's nothing. Well, um, if you're doing something illegal, make sure you have a positive ends to your means. You know what I'm saying? Um, and if you're doing something legit, like working probably for a year and only getting 60000 a year. I mean, if that's what's making you happy, then go for what make you happy. But if you are still work this job and still be broke at the end of payday, then there's something going wrong. You know, I would encourage anyone, to, if you are all working for someone, to have a side thing going on as well. So you could be learning the business at the same time as you getting paid from another establishment. Right, I agree. Mm-hmm. So that's basically, you know, my outlook on the whole somebody who's working for somebody. I mean, it's not a bad thing because you could get the experience. It becomes a bad thing when it becomes longevity and you never did nothing for yourself. Mm. But that's when it becomes a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some people work for corporations for 40 years, leave out worse than they came in. I know, I remember uh, this lady when I used to work, 
she dropped dead to her last day of work. So I was like, I, that can't be me. So I definitely understand what you're saying. But I know, you know, prior to us even starting this interview, you was talking about, you know, women and them putting, you know, men, you know, before caring about themselves, you know, to put in a short term. So, like, you know, when we talk about those type of things, um, you know, how do you feel or what do you feel a woman should do when it comes to, you know, her life or her lifestyle and, you know, being that woman in, in, in any type of industry and these men are out here and they doing, you know, coming after you or whatever, you know. Interesting you said that because I just see something about the girl Lotto, I think, on the, um, what's that, uh, neighborhood. The neighborhood so, talk. Right, she was saying how uh, she was trying to get a song cleared from a certain rapper, and um, they wasn't willing to do it unless she was willing to sleep in the bed with with her. So what I would say towards that is you got to stand on business and you got to work extra harder. Because you got something to offer this more than just your creativity to some of these dudes. And they can take advantage of that. So you got to put yourself in a demanding position where individuals or all individuals have to respect your craft and your work to the point where they don't see your body. They just see what your brain and your creativity is producing. And that's putting in that work to where they don't see the beautiful body of a woman. They see the beautiful idea of a woman. So that's what I would say towards, you know, the females that's getting hit on, that's trying to make a name in this industry, but, you know, being thrown in a proposition to have sex in order to get through certain barriers. Right, so basically all money ain't good money. Yeah, I always say that, you know, sometimes, man, you got to chase certain bags, you know what I mean? Like, you got to, every bag ain't worthy of being chased. You know, you got to know what lane you in. And with bag that you going for. And in what instance would you not chase the bag? <laughs> it was like, you know, if you chasing, I mean, everybody got to start off somewhere, but it comes a time where, you know, listen, I'm too grown to be chasing 30,000 a year. I mean, I'm, I'm 35 years old for those who are 35. What am I doing chasing 40,000 a year? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah, just by that <laughs> criteria, you got to know, listen, I'm in my 40s, man. I need to be in the eight, nine-figure bracket because what's my, what's my age produce? I can't be 40 years old in a five-figure bracket. Nah, that, that don't add up, man. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got to know what bag you chasing because you could chase this kind of bag and get so comfortable and content with that that you don't... Chasing a bag of multiple millions would be out of your lane, out of your reach, because you only know this bag. You ain't know when to jump off that train. It's like they can, like the, the, the modern day slavery, they complain about slavery, but then the modern day slavery is the labor market because you can barely take care of yourself after all of that. Yeah, man, um, it's serious. It's serious when it comes to that labor. You know, an individual got to protect their labor because that's very important. Your labor is valuable, and you know? um, that's important, man. But some people don't value their labor. They what do you the, feel that they value? The money that's being offered, the fifteen dollars an hour. Mm. Wow. So they labor is worth only fifteen dollars an hour. Yeah. That's what they feel their labor is worth. That's what's what's that minimum wage? I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm not. I never had to be in that position. You know, so I don't know what minimum wage is. What is it? Fourteen dollars an hour. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. <laughs> so you know, for somebody out there that know, man, let me know what the minimum wage is. But um, yeah, you know, some people value certain bags, and they just become locked into that. They don't become versatile when it's come to what bag you trying to chase or what bag you going. You know, some people it's just cool with chasing a sixty thousand a year bag, seventy thousand a year bag. Some individuals like myself want 
$8 million a year back. 